Let's fill some hard drives. The hard drives are cold. They need the filling. <clears throat> Greetings and welcome to Die Dragon Die presents the Grimstone Chronicles, Season 4, Episode 14. I am your DM and host, joined by the full Ontario crew. Let me get their mics a warm, like some microwaved cream-filled donuts. All right, here we go. <laughs> That's, that just doesn't sound appealing. It doesn't. I'm not I've a donut I've never tried fan. that. I kind of want to see what happens. <laughs> I'm assuming it just turns into a bad. The Tim Hortons police shows up. <laughs> you're, you're, you're arrested what? and deported. <laughs> right. You're doing it wrong, sir. <laughs> How is everyone on this fine Wednesday? Yeah, Fox, good to see you, man. So yeah. I am rocking a bit of a migraine because um, perfect. I got I got choked in class. That's perfect. And then I fell for it again after being instructed on how to not fall for it again. So then they went through this, like, we're going to practice escaping it. Which meant it was like again and again. And I was like, I, I have to stop my back. My head is killing me. I need blood to my brain. I use it for things. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a hobby. <laughs> just a, I, I, I need brain blood. <laughs> so it, it just... Uh... Uh, it, Randomly, it, how's it going? You know. <laughs> uh, so we're we're taking it slow, and uh, you know, if I if I turn my camera off, that means I've turned, or I'll turn the light off in the room and start the ceiling if I need to. But yeah, that's TV. that's how you handle migraines. Uh, less input. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely, definitely me closing my eyes and basically going into the darkness uh, is what happens. I, I get I only get migraines. I've only ever had migraines from training or from like took the wrong thing as a child. Took the wrong cold medicine type thing. So I, cool. I don't get them very frequently. Ahmed, what's That's new with you? What's going on? Uh, things are good. Um, this, well, Halloween's coming up, so no shenanigans from Marty. <laughs> Calling dibs on no shenanigans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing one of the. Uh, it would have my... to be this Saturday. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the the event for um, the event uh, for my boys every year. Do a Halloween thing. This year is going to be a Naruto inspired thing where I actually have a bunch of different costumes for for myself and uh two of the main ones for the boys and they're gonna i'm gonna train them and and get them to like level up and gain their powers and then they're gonna fight the different costumes that i have if you know anything about naruto they the characters have like different um like uh, eye, eye, iris yeah different yeah. eyeballs so i have a whole bunch of different contact lenses that match the costumes <laughs> so you know how to put in contact uh yeah uh. yeah yeah <laughs> Okay. That's funny. I hate contacts. I hate so so no no, but they're really cool ones. I should uh I should have them, but they're they look really cool. And uh and uh take, yeah, I'm gonna take, go through take that. pictures we wanna see. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna the, be pretty this, cool. This child's so holiday worried. that is really for you, but oh, it's so cool. It's so much fun. Uh, Ahmed is the biggest <laughs> weeb. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, so I'm 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 i I took the week off to actually uh rest and plan all that stuff, so Cool. <laughs> we got for it. Yeah, that's your. It point. was mostly the rest. I haven't rested. <laughs> it's at it's all. your holiday. Man. It's, your holiday. <laughs> it's my break, <laughs> man. It's my break. Mark, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. That's me. How many playthroughs so far on Wrath of the Righteous? I, I've I've only got two. Oh, okay, I'm, but that's I'm, after uh, restarting, and you had four going. I right? did do the I did the restart thing. I had okay. four going. So I got two. I've got mm -hmm. a. Um, well, he's looking to be chaotic, evil, blood rager, and a lawful good uh, paladin. The paladin group is twelfth level now. Mythic three. Woo! You've you've gotten far. You're in. You're well past the Battle of Dresden, right? Yeah, I'm well. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm exploring the lands after Dresden now. And uh, the blood rager is. Uh, yeah, I got a little sick of being goody goody, so I'm like, I'll do the blood rager now. <laughs> Complete. You can't be completely chaotic evil, otherwise you just kill all the NPCs and there's nothing going on. So, um, 
but uh, you can be pretty chaotic at least. And uh, yeah, that guy is about he's sixth level now in mythic rank one. Cool. Uh, yeah. So when I, when I came back from the summer to Seattle to here, I had my game files, but you have to repopulate these certain folders with again, images and yeah i started it again. <laughs> yeah, so i'll have my hero part party that i'll finish the game with uh, maybe this december or something but uh i restarted with the uh, the lich the lich path so i've got uh i've got a bunch of mercenaries that are all freaking evil bastards and it's fun yeah it i'm fun. planning on doing a lich one as well because Ah, how do you not? The, the furthest I've gotten is the city in the abyss. Uh, I got to that point. I expected a short chapter, and it was just a long one. And I'm like, uh, I don't feel like it. Let's go do something else. Uh, anyways. Okay. Uh, why don't we do a recap what happened last game? <clears throat> or the last couple of games. Um... So four games. four games ago was uh, Barnabas, Brenos, Cog, Widget, Rift, Countess, Quintessa, and Valsorin. They went to um, the Greystone Citadel two games ago, Storm and a Half. While the majority of the Steel Rose Expeditionary League is at the Citadel Greystone, the remainder of the group comes under attack at the Half Axe Inn. We ended that episode a little bit early and continued uh, in last game, which was called It Bargles the Mind. Amadeus receives a visitor in prison. Sunny, Cog, Thogram, Slake fend off the attackers. Sunny quickly sets about scrying upon the assailants in search for a stolen artifact. They stole my <clears throat> crack that the party knowingly gave me. It got me addicted to because they thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's awesome. I believe you knew the potential consequences. Yeah, of but Sunny it. doesn't really, you know. Yeah. yeah, magic. He's not, you're not the only ones who get cursed by Sunny playing with yeah. things. He gets cursed. <laughs> the group reunites at the Half Axe Inn, but are interrupted by the pleas of a priestess of the Five Face God. Uh, an investigation reveals deep troubles at the Church of the Five Face God in Overlook and possibly in Overlook in general. An interrogation reveals a new and secretive religion for shape changers. I think we left off with uh, the party at the Half Axe Inn. Before we resume, Quintessa, uh, you had been given a bill from the Expeditionary League by Barnabas. Kind of, he kind of threw it at you <laughs> before you left with your son. <laughs> uh, you know that you have to check in with uh, Yazel Brist uh, in Denovar, uh, as yeah. as she was the one that uh, wanted you to go and solve, you know the problems that were on the northern reaches of the Elsier Vale. So I've got the Denevar city map. I know that Quintessa can teleport, right? Yes, she can. Val can also teleport. So um, uh, it's easy for you guys to get to Denevar. You've been there many times before. Uh, you find yourself waiting in a waiting room. Um, there are a number of Imperial guards, not capital uh, <laughs> G, Whereas Val Soren is, and one of the guards looks really nervous when he sees Val Soren. <gasps> you, you've, you've encountered uh, Lieutenant Screech before. You're pretty sure something happened to him in the Shadow Plane that has made him perpetually um, frightened. Okay. He oh, has, yeah, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, has, um, he has the duty of guarding, like, the waiting room outside of... Uh, <laughs> outside of uh, Yazelle's uh, uh, public office. Ah, uh, excuse me, Countess. He he's like looking wide-eyed at Valsorin. Does that mean the prince is coming? No. Well, he's simply guarding me. Maybe not paranoia, um, uh, uh, Quintessa, <laughs> as he would rightfully be frightened if the prince was arriving. <laughs> Well, yeah, because he's a <clears throat> fucking psycho. <laughs> Eventually, he settles down and 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 kind of uh, he like commands the four guards that are within this hall. Uh, you're, you're waiting for a moment. Val eventually just takes off his helmet and sits down beside you. You, speaking of the prince, you didn't tell me about your visit. Sorry, I missed that. Speaking of the prince, you didn't tell me about your visit. How did it go? Not well. 
He, he looks at you strangely. It's nothing you need to concern yourself with. Um, church business, I presume? Yes, basically, which is kind of a lie. <laughs> and she not good at bluffing because she a wisdom sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and she's a sorcerer, so she has no skill points. <laughs> I, I, you I, feel that. I, I resemble <laughs> that with Chaga. Um, Ten on, on the bluff check. <laughs> wow, okay, so Val is an int caster he's gonna plus one wisdom oh goodness sense motive plus 18 because of an item aha so he 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 just basically uh holds your hand for a little bit like like it's all right the prince can be intimidating when he wants to you know Val Soren has to be very careful about how he even talks in private about the prince, given mm -hmm. that he is basically positioned on this planet to guard the prince's interests. <clears throat> Certainly has his ways. It's best to give the prince what he wants. And to not make enemies of his household. <clears throat> course okay he, he nods how simple your your son has made it he likely just, has no just, idea just, what, just what the prince break is the laws of magic mom come on <laughs> <laughs> all right so he, he you can tell your son is is concerned about you eventually uh um Aragathos leaves uh um well, sorry what map is this uh we're on denivar I thought I forced you guys there. Uh, nope. I think we're in a different campaign. There we go. And then we're zoomed in. Oh, well, okay. The <clears throat> Imperial Hall. Oh. Ah. Got it. <clears throat> Thank you. There, I can... there we go. All right. Eric Othos leaves uh, Yazel Brees' office. Uh, he's like the Archmage of Denevar, probably one of the more powerful casters in all of. Uh, in all of. Uh, the Elsir Vale. He stops for a moment. Uh, why does why does Aragathos not like the Countess? Uh, because she is a follower of Weejas is probably good enough for most Imperials. Okay. And she's a sorceress. <laughs> Countess is what he says. Give give me a um, a perception check from uh, Quintessa as there were some like functionary wizards that were bumbling with some paperwork uh, and like trying to organize it while showing Ar uh, while showing Aragatha something. He sort of waved it off, but forty-two. Okay, it's wisdom sorcerer. <laughs> um, one of the documents had an arcane sigil on it. That arcane sigil you've just recently seen. Because it belongs to one of the members of the uh, the Steel Rose Expeditionary League. Um, I don't know if you've met Thogrim yet. No. Okay. Oh wait. Uh, yeah, she I think met, we met. We met when there was a gathering before. That's right. We left. When when you first arrived. All right. Yeah. Um, for some reason, Thogrim's <laughs> arcane sigil was on one of the documents that was clearly out when when he was in the. Um, uh, when he was in the uh, the offices of uh, the imperial administrator, he stopped and basically went, "Countess, I don't know if you Archmage." <laughs> he, he he like tried to under his white beard smile, but it came more off as a sneer, and then he just walks off with his uh, with a bunch of underlings and in, in tow. Maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a page comes out and invites you into the office of, uh, of Yasel Priest. Uh, okay. Val looks to you like, do you want, do you want me in? He puts his helmet back on. Um, <clears throat> I think it's just probably bad form to bring a armed warrior in. So whether it's your son or not, they, the one thing that you've noticed is that 
while other people are checked for weapons, Valsorn is not. No, he's the dude who, who should have weapons as far as everyone's concerned. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'll stand just inside the door. Uh, Thank you, dear. The, the guards, like, stiffen. It's almost like, even though they're not part of the same military branch, they, they, they give great difference to, uh, to, to Val uh, by the shiny armor that he, that he, mm-hmm. that he wears and the, the uh, station that he has. So they all kind of salute. They probably also salute because of you. Mm-hmm. Um, Yuzel is be- behind this uh, mammoth uh, a desk. Uh, it is filled with papers. There's a bunch of pages running around. She claps her hands and sends the pages off as you come in. Uh, she stands up. She straightens some of her uh, her very uh, expensive clothing. Um, she's got a beautiful jade hairpin in that is keeping her long hair up. You could see that there is a dragon uh, at the end of the jade pin. Okie doke. Uh, she'll wait to be. Uh, yeah, she 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 and... wa- she waves you in. <clears throat> All right, she'll come in. She comes around her desk, something that she probably doesn't do for every visitor, and she actually gives you a hug. And how are yeah. you doing, my dear? It's more of a like the kiss double cheek, yeah. but but not very heartily. Sort of. Uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, you you've been friends with Yazelle probably for most of your life. All right. <clears throat> um. Things have been better, but she 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 waves to the last page as it comes out, and they close they close the door. Uh, she almost has her uh, her hand waving down pat to the point where it's they know almost which, like a, which wave means what? It's almost like a second language, like a side language. <laughs> <laughs> That's the coffee wave, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> door open or closed wave, you know, yeah, that sort of thing. I see that you're all in one piece. She, she looks you up and down and notices, yes. the, notices the bit of the worry that was on your face from the last conversation that you had with, with Val. Yes. Um, speaking of which, she reaches into her pouch. Um, the Expeditionary League sends its apologies, but we were beset quickly by the gnolls and it just proved easier to just Plunge all the way through and solve the problem before. Um, in offering a price. She looks at it. It's not a bad price, is what she says. Although I what? wouldn't want to have to pay this every single time we want them to do something. What do you make of them? And she walks over to a little, uh, like, a, like an end table where there's a bunch of um, um, uh, tea that has already been set out, and she starts pouring a couple cups. They are powerful, <clears throat> that is for certain. But they're also secretive. Honey? Yes, just a touch. Okay. She, she, makes, she makes it like a, a cup of tea. It's on a very mm-hmm. nice saucer. She hands it to you. Also notice that there are little dragon motifs on the... Ah, thank you. On the uh, saucer and the uh, the teacup. I will also say the celebrations are nice. That Barnabas is quite a cook. She 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 seems. Can they be trusted? She settles in behind her desk again. Uh, there is a seat that you can that you can sit on. Opposite I of the desk. They can be trusted so long as. They're compensated for their work. Well, all mercenaries want to be. It does appear that they've been settling in. Well, yeah, I suppose so. They look very comfy in that inn, little does she know. <laughs> I did receive a disturbing report that there was some sort of attack. No, I. It's the first, I think this is the first she's heard of it. Yeah, you got back, and I don't think you wandered around the destroyed. Uh... No, I don't. I don't think hmm. I did. Oh no! Wait, yeah, there was the pay me. Was yeah, there? It, yeah, there was a big. She sp- showed up, and the, the the inn was destroyed. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Barnabas yeah. uh, yeah. was like, "Pay me," and 
while yeah. he was having a yes, shit. Yes, um, <laughs> evidently they fought things off, but um, as I said, they are secretive and wanted to seem to want to keep things to themselves about what that was about. I do think they bear watching one way or another. Well, they've certainly integrated themselves, or at least made their impact. They defended Brindle. They delivered um, pieces of the bombard that now guards overlook by way of Baldrin's watch. This slake was granted temporary marshaldom in enacting some sort of vengeance plot against those that slew his, slew his family. Thogrim is on a list to become a defender of Overlook. Sunny, she, she seems to, there's a wrinkle on her forehead, <laughs> like a bit of a strain. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, the, the same wrinkle appears on her face because she knows what he's been up to, too. Our druid of Volcanica, she says. Oh. <laughs> well, he... had he not warned us with the truth, he would have been shackled in chains and placed into a dungeon where his druid magics would not work. Yes. Use other magic. <laughs> this Breno seems to be some sort of dwarven folk hero and widget, um, not a resident of Volcanica, but actually from a different world. An imperial world, as she says. Well, at least he's an imperial. They saved my interests, she says. While I was on duty in the Shadow Plane. Really? I wanted another set of eyes. Someone that I could trust. I assume you'll forgive me for my intrigue. Of course. I wish to extend them an offer. Unless I hear objections otherwise. And she glances back to uh, Val Soren. He's just standing there. Kind of half listening. She actually gets up and is like looking out the window, kind of hands behind her back. She left her she left her tea almost untouched, <clears throat> smoking um, on the overly large desk. Elsie Veil and Overlook, and well, our imperial lands are being attacked. It appears from all sides with the war in the south, goblins giants and other things attacking us in the north at the same time there have been attacks in against our infrastructure there have been attacks in the imperial city itself this is no coincidence one thing an oddity two coincidence three no there is a plot it is a plot that is wide-reaching. And you want this Expeditionary League to look into it? I want to know that I have some very capable mercenaries at my beck and call when things get worse. You notice she pushes open the the door a little bit and this greenish abjuration magic sort of hits her uh, uh, sort of glows a little bit as some of the ash from the recent uh, um, snowfall actually touches her Ooh. oh there is a scroll you should probably learn the spell or take note of it uh, she'll look at the scroll. Cause... Yeah, there's you look at the scroll. Green magic. It is an endure element spell, but against acidic effects. Acidic and corrosion. So it's it's kind of like 
uh, unless acid does a damage, your <laughs> you and your belongings would be uh, would be protected. Protected. <laughs> a minor abjuration I had Aragathos cook up, given the recent weather. Interesting. Uh, Out it's... of curiosity, what circle is this new spell? Uh, and Duralmas is first, so this was yeah. first. That copy is for you and your church. You could also share it with the Expeditionary League. You know that you could use it as a source to pray for it as a divine spell. Or actually, like, learn it. Okay. Yeah. No, she'll bring it back to her church to yep. get copied first. And... Yep. Yep. How much do you think I'll need to give them? And what do you think I'll need to give them? I want them on retainer. She's looking at the weather. Like, there's you could barely see across the city with the... Uh, uh, with the cloud cover, the snow, and mixed with the ash fall. Like, this gray snow is just dumping on Denevar right now. Well, given that the current headquarters, shall we say, has been attacked and is quite a mess, they may be looking for a new place to reside. Some place their enemies don't know about. Some property... Oh, she says more like a wizard's hideout? Something like that, yes. All right. I assume it will take more than just that. She comes She comes back over to her desk, sits, sits back down. She takes a, a, a sheet of, uh, of clean parchment and... Um, uh, starts writing with this uh, beautiful quill. It looks like a peacock feather. I'm going to make a list of things that you may be that you may offer them on my behalf. I do not have the time nor the inclination to lead them directly. However, given that your Time at Greystone. Has impressed you. She's waiting for you to protest. I would like With you. With all due respect, Administrator, the Prince himself has set me upon a project that will take up a great deal of my time. Uh, she's probably looking visibly nervous just speaking about it. <laughs> and this is something you would rather do? It's not something I would rather do, but one does not question the prince, now does... now do they? Hmm. Perhaps I could give you a reprieve unless it's something immediate that requires your attention it has been ongoing research for some time but a reprieve would be especially helpful this is she she pauses for a moment this is the same research that the isn't this project the purview of the master of the temple? It was. Um, he has been deemed to have failed the prince and has been sent for re-education. Yazel looks annoyed briefly. I will inform the prince that I have you helping with the defense of the veil. You may have to name someone else to stand in your stead. 
I'm assuming someone helped your... Um, she has the name, Marty doesn't. Uh, what was his name? Hi, we have a Damiscus. I assume he had an underling or someone that could stand in his stead. Well, undoubtedly, the most qualified person to take over is... Oh, what's that half-orc's name? The half-orc at the court? Yeah. <laughs> Esoteric pole? <laughs> uh... Uh, I don't. I don't have that. Locrates. I don't have that map. What was it? Locrates or something. Locrates. Like yeah. Yeah. Some. She is. Is Locrates. He has all the information, all the research since it began. He is certainly the wisest and smartest of wizards, given his position with the prince. This might take some time for me to negotiate with the prince for your time. What I suggest is that you. Until there's something for the Expeditionary League to do, you're all right with effectively being my liaison? Of course. It would be my honor. I wouldn't mind to be apprised of any issues. If you do find something... I will report to you immediately. Issues of loyalty or issues of security to the Imperium. We have been informed by our prince that we must rely upon our own defenses this time round. While the Imperium is no stranger to war and upheavals and enemies on all sides, it appears that it is not common for things, at least on Volcanica, to all erupt at once. I see. He is a failure as a leader. <laughs> is that what you say? Or is no, you of course not. <laughs> is that what you're saying? I'm pretty certain that's what she thinks. That's what she yeah. thinks. It's an incensed motive to be like incensed, <laughs> hiding incensed. <laughs> the war in the south does not go well, aside from. A few shining souls. There are rumors of a fungus that is affecting the very nature of magic. That teleportations are not working. And that, that the tri concerning. and that the trifort areas will be overcome should should things continue to go poorly. Surely the goblins can't be that organized. No, it is their leader. Some, some thing called the Iron Lord. How dreadful. Still, the Knolls. She's she's writing down a list of things that um, uh, that you are allowed to offer. <laughs> Uh, it includes a property, a base. Um, if they find a place that they like and it's owned or inhabited by enemies of the state, then that could also be a... <laughs> An option. Um, she's willing to award one or two of them a minor non-hereditary title. Okay. Um, she's willing to have a custom, a single custom magical staff up to 100,000 gold pieces crafted for the party. Um, Are these end conditions? <laughs> end conditions. <laughs> the monthly stipend she's, she's willing to go up to. She wants it to be five thousand. She's willing to go up to ten. Uh, this this plus salvage rights outside of Elsier Vale. Okay. 
Yeah. Obviously against enemies of the Imperium, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, there's... Yeah. A piracy writ in the yieldy times. <laughs> <laughs> Arr. You, you get to keep the shit that you find. Uh, the, 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 um, the caveats would be um, artifacts need to be handed over. Which is kind of yeah. the general law anyways, uh, which many people apparently don't follow. <laughs> I can't imagine. We have to confirm <laughs> their artifacts first. We have to make sure. We don't want to lie. We were fishing <laughs> and it fell out of the boat. <laughs> we tried to detect magic, but it wouldn't show up. Yeah. <laughs> and, any, and then there's kind of like any general support that, you know, the Imperial Administrator of the entire ter territory could give. Um, you're yeah. free to negotiate. So you, you've been given some, some negotiations, uh, or at least some prices that Quintess or uh, that uh, Yazel is willing to pay. You could also remind them that I'll be willing to continue to support their charter as a mercenary company. I certainly will. I'm sure that will... That should be enough. I'm going to have to clear my head to write the letter to the prince. <laughs> she, she, she does not look like she's enjoying that prospect. No, no one wants to talk to the prince. No one. <laughs> Except his cuttlefish chef. Because apparently he doesn't care if there's poison in it. <laughs> It may take some time. Until then, you should follow his orders. Do you know of any wizards who are especially adept at, well, metamagic's not what I'm looking for? Have you ever seen anyone who can increase the power of a cantrip? without metamagic. I'm sorry. This is the same... This is the same quest that Damiscus was on, isn't it? Unfortunately, yes. Well... I will... give you the same advice that I gave Domiscus. There are some creatures that cast spells slightly different than we do. You could look to them for inspiration. Dragons, perhaps. Perhaps. There yes. are other ways of casting spells that are not tapping into the weave itself. Widget, one of the members of the Expeditionary League, is a shadow caster? Yes, so I've been informed. I just... Perhaps if you understood... Sh shadow the... magic is just so... You per understand. <laughs> yes, but perhaps if you understood how they differed, you might be able to attack the problem from a different angle. Perhaps. The last, she thinks for a moment. You could consult sages. Uh, yes, Damascus has done this, though. I know you are a very potent caster and a very formidable woman, but I don't think you're a scholar, right? No, she's not. She's a fucking sorcerer, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> this could be a problem that is better solved by having the right advisors having those that understand the theory as opposed to the practice you don't think I make all of my decisions based off of what I know no of course not I have my own advisors as well of course I just don't know that many our temple is full of 
scholarly wizards and priests, and none of them have been able to solve it. Damascus was the smartest and wisest of us, and he could not break this puzzle. If it can be broken, go on. I, these are my problems. I will deal with them. I'm sorry to have bothered you with them. It is the same scholarly pursuit that, or experimentation that was tasked to your master. I it pains me to see that such an impossible task has been laid upon you. Well, at least I shall have hopefully a reprieve from it. Uh, do let me know if there is no reprieve, though. She nods. Good luck with the League. Thank you. I will bring your proposal to them immediately. I will read your report about what you found at, um, at Greystone. Yeah. Anything um, immediate of concern? Uh, Mark's trying to remember now. She was kept out of the loop on a, on a few things. Oh, yeah. Well, I believe the dwarf Brenos possesses the platinum blade. <laughs> Loose lips. <laughs> From Brindle. Yes, and a it. woman fell out of it. <laughs> At least that's how they described it. <laughs> I don't. A woman fell out of the blade. With wings. Ah. She asked to be dropped off in Brindle at the shrine of the Io, was it? Uh, Bahamut. Bahamut. At the shrine of Bahamut. Hmm. She said it was a place she was familiar with. I've been to the Hall of Valor and Brindle several times. I've seen the Platinum Sword with my very eyes. Hanging upon the wall, it was a weapon that was used in the battle against the, uh, the Red Hand of Doom. Decades ago. We were quite young then, weren't we? Yes, back in the day. It seems like forever now. It was a paladin that wielded the blade, she says. As Int I recall. Interesting. I shall have someone investigate. I keep an eye on the woman that fell out of the blade. Hmm. <clears throat> And then Greystone itself? Greystone itself is a... Oh, God. I wasn't there for, like, the end of the games. So does she know it was a Githzeri stronghold? She knows that much, yeah. And it was made out of Chaos Stone, or...? Yep, you pick, picked up that from the conversations. Given that Barnabas is a spiteful bastard, is it... Can I just say he had mentioned he knows who owns the place? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, Citadel Greystone itself, um, we know who owns it. Well, at least that Barnabas character claims he does. Okay, she... It's a Gesseri stronghold made out of Chaos Stone. I believe they're from Limbo, they, he said. Monks from Limbo. She nods slowly. She's understanding your words, but she seems to... This may be a little bit out of her, out of her depth. Should we be concerned? Is the threat ended? I think we should speak to the dwarf who owns it, but the portal is... They've guaranteed me the portal is closed portal oh yes um these the gnolls were coming through with these um shadow weapons 
Okay. This whole piece of the story about a god waking up. <laughs> yeah, was, she, was she in there for that? Oh, nope. she was did there. Uh, did it, you tell her? Because I, I just remember watching the stream going, they're, they're, they're doing out of their way to keep her out of the loop on shit. <laughs> so I, I don't want to... Uh, that was a dangerous fight. We didn't want to kill your character. So I think some things were kept from Quintessa. Like, she was... Was she... Was I, I guess the question is the... So, so she showed up because like it was the conversation with uh, the lady when we bought her out of the sword. Yeah. And now it's split into two pieces. So I think you're right, actually, where I don't know that Quintessa necessarily mm. knows the whole, mm. like... Uh, yeah, it, I, she... I, I think Barnabas would have put the bill a bit higher if we stopped an evil god from coming through Whoa. a portal. Or woke it up. I yeah, yeah. Giselle wrote up. down Gazere, Chaos Stone, um, uh, Limbo... And then, what did you just tell her? It was uh, Lady, yeah, the Platinum Sword. Yeah. Lady, question mark. Uh, okay, and the gnolls? The gnolls are taken care of, with the exception of a few that ran out into the snows and will likely die of exposure. They were um, mad cultists. They were worshipping, or they were still worshipping the dead god, Yinigu. Okay, she, she was writes mad. down Noel Cultus and then strikes strikes it out. It's a very inhospitable place. Very high up in the mountains. Um, good thing we do not have to spend resources placing a garrison there. No, uh, no we don't. And it's quite possible given where it is if this dwarf does own it he knew nothing about what was going on there I'd be surprised if any member of his clan had been there in centuries if it's a dwarf claim then it will fall up will it fall under clan law it is not within our official borders there are hundreds of claims throughout more of the wild lands surrounding Elsia Vale Unless I need to look into the owner? Well, if he is aware and he is allowing a portal or encouraging a portal in which citizens from my county are being killed, I, I have see. something to say about that. All right, so next time we speak, I'll find out who the owner of that claim is. Although I highly doubt it will pay, <laughs> any money we'll be able to get out of the owner will pay for this. <laughs> she, she looks at the, the 20 grand that the Expeditionary League, uh, she opens up her desk, she counts out some, uh, some tokens, she gets one of her servants to come back in, uh, the tokens probably represent money, uh, the servant leaves. As an opening salvo in your negotiations with the Expeditionary League, we will pay them in full without complaint. A wise tactic. What did you charge? 20 grand? 20, 20 grand. Yes. Okay. Yeah. $150,000. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, Quintessa, you're going to return to your, uh, to your church, I guess, or are you going to like rest up and then go go hunt she's, down the she's gonna rest up at the church uh and then she will go and talk to the league okay it's almost been a month since you've uh you've met the prince he is expecting a monthly report uh think about what you're gonna put in that report or how you're gonna handle that uh and we'll get to the other group It's his TPM report. <laughs> Want my my red tape? The status report. The, the, the prince wants to know how far you've gotten in breaking of magic. I just want perpetual motion. How hard is it? Bring me perpetual motion. The last one is head. It will be tortured until you get perpetual motion or his failure 
to bring me perpetual motion. All right. Meanwhile, at the half X in, it's an utter mess. Get <laughs> everywhere from the wheel. <laughs> Get everywhere. <laughs> Just destroyed furniture. The bar is broken. Uh, you had finished your interrogation with the doppelganger. Uh, when the doppelganger died, I believe his body was burning up. Yeah. Fucking hell. Can we quickly, like, uh, like chop a piece off or something? You know what I mean? Like, chop his leg off or, or, or a hand off or we something? Got a toe. We, we got a toe before you burnt up. That's it? Okay. Yeah. So when you start chopping at the body as it's going, uh, the pieces that you manage to chop off, Cog, don't stay. But the piece that was separated from him before he died... Uh, okay. Breno, Breno still has. You have a toe. Cut. A two. <laughs> Any. So, why the fuck is that thing here, uh, precisely? I'm not sure, but um, there's more of them, and we definitely need to get get to the bottom of this. Otherwise. Well, we don't have the manpower. They work in clearly small cells that are unaware of what each other is doing, which is the way I would have done it, yeah. You know, Desaad is one of them, but he's on our side. If anyone, probably he would be best to find them out. Wait a sec, you seem to know a lot about these things. It, it, it Hold him down! <laughs> <laughs> Where else will try to grab Kong? <laughs> like... I'm just joking, he doesn't bleed. We'll check him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fluid cup now! <laughs> we're not staying here anymore, right? Our enemies know we're here. They're attacking us. No, we're going to need a new place to stay. That's for certain. Talk him in the background. It's just goosebumps everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first they break the bar, and then suddenly the priests aren't priests. At least the doppelgangers are stuck left to only being able to mimic humans, right? Uh, oh, no. The uh, human problem, right? <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Well, humans and elves. No, no. no. Not precisely. Just, just humanoids, generally. So, um, wolves would be included in there, yeah. I remember the sword was able to do... I know the last time he freaking saw this odd. So, Brenos wants to go to the Temple of Moradin and basically <laughs> cut every priest. <laughs> like, you know, I would like to go and watch you try. <laughs> All right, so Any, anything with two legs, really, is what I'd suggest. This week, uh, that you, your downtime planning, we've got Slake is crafting javelins out of the yep. Scissor Wood Tree. Uh, um, um, deadfalls or gathered twigs. Uh, Cog looks like he's building some new magical legs. That's um, interesting. Quick question: The yep. week is ten days, right? Five. Five. Five days. Okay, so I'll split it into two. I can. So uh, that week, I'm actually I'm crafting Zim's hand, and I'll do my swift heal. Swift heal legs. The responsive one will be the following uh, week. Oh, you're you're changing that around. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, because uh, I forgot because the the cost isn't that expensive. I can actually do five thousand dollars a five thousand gold pieces a, a week, right? Of crafting. No, so you, I can... you could do fifteen because you don't sleep. Then I can do all of them in the same week. Okay. Thogrim's recra uh, retraining a feat. Widget, uh, sorry, his simulacra are doing some widget crafting. Sonny is going to continue to spy on the assailants to try to figure out where they went and where they're going and try to get the, a... The, not, not, the, not the doppelgangers, the assailants. Uh, commune with gods is what I've got down for Brenos during the downtime. This is the eighth week of winter. 
Uh, and it's and it's I been mean, the best way the priest can help with that is by bleeding in this cup. <laughs> you, you guys have had twenty five weeks of down of downtime so far. <laughs> so, this week we we call it commuting with gods, but we are basically going to every dwarvish church and convincing their 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 like <laughs> convincing them that they should draw, give a drop of blood. <laughs> Uh, Looking to see if this shit turns black. <laughs> in, in private, Barnabas is going to send a sending to the High Inquisitor. Okay. And, and let him know doppelgangers have escaped Fortress Tree and have infiltrated Overlook. Okay. I approve of that one. <laughs> is it Fortress Top? Uh, for, oh, Fort yeah, Fortress Top. Yeah, Fortress Top. Fortress. Yeah. Uh, so you send ascending the uh, Inquisitor General Theodosius Blackburn. Well, won't that be fun? <laughs> all, like all hail the Five Face God. Wants to kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> How come that feels like a worse thing than all of the bad shit I've done? <laughs> yeah, it is. probably is. Congratulations, you drowned. You're not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, part of it's like, okay, I did a right thing, I did a good thing, I did a good thing. <laughs> Alright, so Brennan's is communing with gods but at first it's going to be commune with priests is that well it's going to be commune with priests on the we're just going to do a quick uh check to make certain that all the the righteous folk of uh <laughs> the leadership being righteous folk of, <laughs> of the town are not doppelgangers okay i've got written down widget eye and head eye and head and then barnabas singing steel oh yeah barnabas wants to uh find some Singing steel, so you can just put a little ornament on his cane. So, because free action is better than action <laughs> for starting bird song. Yeah, it's not an starting. action. It's than <laughs> not an action. action. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Widget wants to know why he's got a guy, a god's eyeball, and a weird head in a bag. <laughs> All right. First things first. Are you guys staying? Are you like, yeah, we should leave, and then just no, we're, not, we're not doing we're, anything? Or are you are you going? No, somewhere? we're going to. Uh, I suggest we leave the town entirely. Is <laughs> this has like got this confused, baggy-eyed look of isn't someone going to bibbity bobbity, you know, put everything back together before we leave? <laughs> uh, for any of you that are doing training, yeah. your, trainer, <laughs> your trainers are in Overlook, so that's the that's we're the, staying in Overlook. That's one. Although oh, Sunny, Sunny's at uh, the tree, I think. Um, the Witch Cross. Witch okay, Cross? Sunny, yeah. Sunny is. Spying an assailant, so I think that could happen anywhere on this world as opposed to a, uh, yeah, I, a I, pocket I, dimension. Uh, it's, I believe it's called Witch Cross. It's the mm -hmm. Witch Cross, yeah. Yep. So, so yeah, Sonny trains at Witch Cross, and he'll go over there. But he'll go, he'll detox at Witch Cross because I think he's yeah. Uh, but I've uh, got him spying on assailants is what he's doing for the next two weeks. Yep, that's what he's doing. Okay. It, it, uh, well, he, if the party is somewhere here, then he'll he'll be with the party. I mean, all right. So he, that... he he return oh. he's he's on the map. He returns after dealing with the. Well, see see what's sketchy here is we want to not be on this map, so we need to be on another map and not be on this map. Yeah. <laughs> so, so... <laughs> it's interesting. So where are we going? <laughs> somewhere fucking else. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking about the shadow plane. No, 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 not the shadow plane. <laughs> <laughs> not there. That's not the correct place. <laughs> Wrong answer. It is far too dark. Um, Isn't this why we crafted Thogrim's Forge? Says Eamon. I'm not going to the magical closet hidey hole. It is difficult to find the assailants if we put another magical barrier. I know where we'll stay. We'll stay with Lord Plagor de Verac. Are you two getting along there? Ah, we will. Isn't that... Don't you 
Sonny, don't you don't we have to go there and meet him? You know, hand him the the agreement with the giants or whatever. Oh yes, uh, <laughs> perfect. Uh, of course. <laughs> Ivan, right, you want to pick up the chest too to, with the trade balls in it? <laughs> Gonna have to bring that back. Does wait? Why? Cause the job's not done. We did it. We pacified the giants. Yes. No, no you did it at explicitly not pacified. They're they are pacified. continuing to extort our customer. No, 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 no. They are in a mutually beneficial agreement with the customer and providing a service. <laughs> what a load of shit. You already took care of everything, didn't you? Mr. joins the argument by squawking loudly. <laughs> <Barbara's>. Shut up! <laughs> Shut the fucking up! I'm gonna fucking break it! I thought I was the grumpy one. You were supposed to eliminate all threats to caravans. But... Uh, did you do that? Did you do that? There is a temporal problem. Just, the temporal problem is it's not done yet. <laughs> well, no, it doesn't stay done. The giants keep it done. It, the it, giants what, continuously it, it's, eliminate threats. It's not threats. done, Sonny, because the giants are requiring payment, you see, to stay out of the business. To, no, 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 to stay in the business of protecting No, because, see, that's not what they're actually saying. That's not how a protection racket runs. You weren't paying attention when you were just living in the foundry, were you? We're not playing sports. What, 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 did you, what did you promise to pay them again? Uh, it was uh, like a thousand gold pieces a month. Okay. It, it was... I think it was ten thousand a year, but yeah, yeah. The, they wanted ten thousand a month, and it was like no, per year. <laughs> well, we don't have to give them all that back. That's a hundred thousand gold pieces right there. <laughs> so it's like we give them, we can give them back the difference. I mean, well, at the end of ten years, yeah, that's a hundred thousand. At eleven years, it's a hundred and ten thousand. It's commerce. They're supposed to, you know, take the stuff that doesn't mean too much and pass it back and forth between Point each being, other. being, you were supposed to eliminate the giants or pacify them. They're not, not pacified if we're paying them. Yeah, They're you were. All work against that was the your job. You didn't do it. That wasn't the job. I am the druid of Volcanica. I don't eliminate the inhabitants of Volcanica. It's ridiculous. <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? So he's going to bend over and pick up, like, a broken piece of cup okay. and drink from it. <laughs> like <it's... laughs> Why do I even talk with you? <laughs> I don't even fucking know. It's ridiculous. I, I know. He's talking to Mistra. Eliminate the giants? What did he possibly mean by eliminate the giants? <laughs> oh, that would be and... awful and cruel, says the keeper of the world's most sadistic zoo! <laughs> <laughs> They are not being wasted. Additionally, you have them paying for commerce. That's not happening. The mine's not even open yet. They need to go do mining things. Do you know how that works? With picks. All right. Boots. All right. You know what? I take responsibility for this failure. It's my failure. As a, as a, as a leader... That is your no, no, I think it's important to note that when we first got together, the deal was I would help you find your dragon treasure and you would help me with my job. Now, I succeeded by leaps and bounds beyond all your wildest imaginations, did I not? What was your job again? <laughs> to find you the treasure. You got the treasure. You got two dragons treasure. You had a fucking flying castle for half a day. That's what you got. You know what I got? I got a failure. That's what I got from you. A bunch of little fucking failure. <laughs> You're but a Dad. failure, Druid of Volcanica. <laughs> you failed at this job. Yeah, yeah. The volcano went off. That's your fault. Eamon's <laughs> <laughs> staring down at the ground. He doesn't quite agree with Barnabas' tirade. <laughs> 
<laughs> and look at this. Look at this. Look what happened to his head. It's fucking disgusting. No, oh, don't worry, but no, we'll we'll bring you to a temple of Asmodeus. He'll get you sorted out. Slakes looking at Barnabas. <laughs> All right, so where are we going? <laughs> oh yeah, Lord Verak. He's gonna have a place for us. Is there another one with another pub somewhere? Oh, I don't know. Big up the money though. Do I, perhaps the monastery? Uh, that's not a bad idea, is it? It's nice and away from, you know, the people, <laughs> the squishy innocents, <laughs> in case, you know, somebody tries to kill us. <laughs> that's a fine idea, Brenos. I like that idea, yeah. Let's try the, um... Barnabas is also thinking, and if the dragon comes back, we'll beat him up and take his gold. <laughs> 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 yeah. I like the idea of it at the temple. Any objections? No. Wonderful. Uh, uh, what, what fucking temple? You know, you know the temple where uh, Amadeus, uh, where Sejon was? Yeah. That's, that's the temple I'm talking about. Why don't we stay at the temple that we just took over? Because it's, it's fucking far. So? And it's cold. So? Stay inside. What what place we take we took over a place, and him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want Slake to be in your building that's held together with the fucking chaos magics, and <laughs> <laughs> and a portal to the evil god? Well, I really. And want then to... Reynolds is doing like a. <laughs> 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 I really wanted to use the map. I wanted to see what um, Starfield mm, map. I like maps. You'd like this one. Mm. I will take you All there right. if you if they show me if they share their memories. I can take you there. Oh, they will to it. Yes. In the meantime, though, I think the temple is an excellent place for us to hold up. You wouldn't happen to know where this, where the uh, Farsia rest is, would you? You're oh so smart, Barnabas. I don't know where it is, Sonny. Mm. If I find it, I will let you know. Have you tried thinking about it really hard? <laughs> I'll, I'll give that a shot tonight. I oh, wouldn't nice. expect great results given the lack of information that has come my way regarding its location. I have clues. Well, I, I will be happy to look at your clues mm. at a later time when we are all away from here. So we're just going to burn the fucker down? Or... <laughs> no, it's, um, I, I, I think... Lord Eric rented it, so I I would say his damage deposit's gone, but um <laughs> Yeah, I'll just pack your things and let's go. <laughs> Wait, we're going to the monastery where the dragon is? Maybe we're gonna fight the dragon? <laughs> where the dragon was. He's probably calmed down now, you know. Less oh, mad. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he's calmed down now. If he isn't calmed down, then, um... Well, no, it's just another threat to civilization that we wish I had to take care of. If it's a temporary madness, it can be alleviated through magic. Surely right. it can. It's only a couple days' walk, I think. Yes. Do you it want is a couple of days' walk. to go with you? No. Okay. Slake, Mistra, and I will go with you. Well, is, isn't that uh, inside? Barnabas is like, no, Sunny for three days. <laughs> 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 no, Slake for three days. 
Shall I torture each other? Yes! Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> The bird ain't so bad, but you're always mumbling and talking about. Uh, I think it's a fine idea. Talking. Barnabas clasps you on the shoulder. You should try and convince him about magic. I think there's still a chance. <laughs> yeah. There's always a chance. You need sleep, right? Because I can just walk all day long. Yes, but I plan to be kind of a nice fuzzy squirrel and I can crawl up on the nape of your neck and you can walk along while I rest politely. Uh, no, no, I'll go myself. <laughs> I could be oh so cuddly. <laughs> That's not wise given that we are just that we are just attacked. Perhaps you should shut down. Says Amen to Slake. <sighs> which is in the corner shrugging like I was gonna say because he like punching things <laughs> this but... time we might, you might not end up in the grasp of a terrible demon of earth <laughs> you're gonna fight the dragon before I get there well, oh, it's a chance, yeah. There's an angry dragon there. If we get there, we're not going to... Sejong know. probably has come down by now. And what is the chances that we'd have to fight another dragon? <laughs> All right, fine. You, you, you fuckers have convinced me. Spell begging, bastard, <laughs> clang, clang, clang. He's gathering up his stuff. He comes back down. He puts the, he puts the metal stretcher down, lays down on it. If I end up in the ground again. <laughs> hey, Slake, that table over there isn't quite all the way smashed if you want to go, you know, smash it before you go. <laughs> Slake picks up some debris and, and, and hucks it at the table. It breaks the table. He, he can put his strength behind. behind uh... There we go. <laughs> all right, Slake, Slake is wheeling... To fight a very powerful magical beast uh, to shut down to allow you guys to teleport. Okay, now we should teleport him to a plinth in the middle of. <laughs> <laughs> we plane shift pandemonium and teleport to a plinth. <laughs> you luck, magic, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Stop your way out of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're scheming, huh? <laughs> uh, Adam has thoughts. Well, Adam's right. characters don't have bluffs, so they don't yeah. have thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the party is going to teleport to the to the monastery? Uh, yes. Okay. Abandoned. Like the outskirts of the monastery, like the the approach where we were attacked by a bunch of... Yeah, not directly objects. inside. Yeah, th this uh, map... Let's see if I can find... That way, if there's burning... And They're staining. all in here. Um... <laughs> The monastery grounds. Monastery grounds, yeah. Alright, uh, not too far away from Overlook is the Monastery of the Center Chain, where Sejong has trained monks and priests for a very long time. Uh, things look very quiet uh, in the monastery when you arrive there. The doors are closed. It does not look like there are fires um, burning. In fact, it looks like it's shut down. Okay. We will approach cautiously. Uh, Barnabas is going to check for traps in case someone thought, well, we're closing the place up, but let's just do some security before we... Yeah, eventually Slake just, you know, sits up. Did I miss it? No. No fault yet. Fucking crazy dragon. Yeah, um, it. This is a. This is the same day that we dealt with the. Um, same day uh, as the attack, I guess. You started scrying. The doppelgangers. Um, so the like, same day as the doppelgangers. Yeah. So the day after the attack. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Still was a very busy day for Sunny. <laughs> uh, yeah, you find that uh, there is no one home, uh, really. Hey, works for us. <laughs> All right. 
This is also a pretty good place to talk to Chaos Beasts, but first we need to do the whole, like, make certain that Overlook isn't just completely filled with doppelgangers pretending to be priests. All right. Those priests get to lose their heads. So you're going to settle in here. Are you are you concentrating around a particular building or room? And are you, like, sleeping in rope tricks? Or are you using this as the inner intermediary to the uh, Thogram's Forge? Like, who is actually sleeping at the monastery grounds? Uh, Barnabas is... Well, he's going to use um, mythic points for a mage's private sanctum. Okay. Could you point, like, where it's a giant map? Area, uh, so, so I think that the... Uh, I'm checking the... The other... Great Hall is probably a decent place to set up. Plus okay. there's a bunch of beds there already. There's yeah. beds and pillars and... Yep, it's been cleaned up since the battle, so I'll have to do some. I'll have to do some uh, cleanup on that map. But uh, let me move your tokens there. They really liked their big jars of raspberry jam. Yeah, they seem to be leaky. <laughs> How big was the jar of raspberry jam? Yeah, these here, are like right? ten by ten foot rooms. I know. It's just... Holy crap! <laughs> How big was the guy in that room? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Okay. Uh, All right. So you, you guys will camp out here, um, yeah. and then some of you are heading back to uh, Overlook. Yes. Okay. Sonny is doing his spying. I think we're scry spells here. To detect scrying and stuff. So we're actually okay. going to now yeah. that we know that people are doing bad things to us, we'll actually run those. Um, the, uh... All right, Slake sits about doing his crafting. Uh, Cog is doing some work on his legs. Um, Thogrim is retraining a feet, so he's actually in Overlook somewhere. Uh, Widget. Eye and head. So what, what do you guys want to do first? Uh, commune with priests... Um, singing steel or eye in the head or anything else whatever that's a fine order go ahead <laughs> me and the priests alright so who is accompanying Brenaus to go talk to priests effectively you're, you're, you're checking for doppelganger dem yeah, uh, yeah, Bar yeah. Barnabas just wants to watch how Brenos does it okay. <laughs> yep. uh, I guess Cog, Cog will join just for, uh, for muscle because Brennus is not enough. All right, <laughs> and then one of so one of you probably teleported here, and then you have to teleport back. So that's two teleports this day. And then I'm going to bring a smaller group of you to the city of Overlook map. Okay, Brian wants to take a teleport off. Okay, for a, for a fifth circle. Uh, and all right. To text grinding. Where in? Um, I guess you're at half axe. Uh, in Overlook, where are you headed in Overlook itself? Uh, well, let's go to the Stone Anvil Cathedral. Okay. <laughs> Start big. <laughs> and we're gonna, there's going to be a whole lot of you know who I am. <laughs> well, um, Brennus, hmm. if you don't mind, um, we need to find a very discreet way of doing this. Yeah, there's fucking doppelgangers. Right, hand. right. So here's here's the thing. Here's the, the thing. needle or the fist. <laughs> Both here's, the, blood. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? That the the doppelgangers, they, if they get catch wind of this, they'll reposition and make sure they're in a place where we are not. Right. So we need to make sure that we do this in such a way that we don't let it known that we're actually doing this. Am I am I right, uh, Barnabas? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> what I'm saying is, if we want to be successful in uh, 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 finding them, Breno knows what he's doing. These are his people. Show some faith in the man. Goodness sakes, Cog. Cog looks at me. I see. I I understand. <laughs> Cog. I'm going to be over there. Cog and Barnabas start taking bets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. The second one, he gets attacked. All right, so the stone anvil relative to the city. So Havaxin was over here. The stone anvil, which is the um, 
the cathedral, uh, also the, the main temple of Morden in the city of Overlook. There's actually a map for this. Uh, cool. Let's center yep. this Goodness. a little bit. Yep. So that is the massive edifice of the uh, uh, of oh, the yeah. of the stone anvil. You do see that there's a lot of scaffolding, uh, and it appears that there are both um, both singing coming from the cathedral as well as a lot of work. Of course, dwarves would sing while they work. <clears throat> okay. uh, you do you notice that some of the streets are cornered off, uh, and that there are some uh, priests. tokens <clears throat> this is the place where there was um there's a funeral right mm -hmm. yeah yeah remember this okay. uh Brennos is worshipping Plankadin on this day. Okay. Probably a good, good God. choice. Even that. Cog's fists are good today. Not lawful. Barnabas' intentions are not. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, there are a number of priests that look like they are uh, in, uh, in charge of uh, what look like guards that are guarding the construction that is going on. Or perhaps overseeing the construction. There is a particular man that looks like he's ordering people around, and it looks like they're checking for credentials as people are going in inside, in, in and out of the cathedral. Seems to be a bit of security here for the cathedral that is just a bit odd. Brenos, give me a okay. sense, sense motive. Well, this, this <clears throat> is a thing Brenos can do. Uh... It's a thing he does well. The thing he does the best is yell at people. <laughs> yes. He's Cut. very, very good at the yelling. Cut heads off and then the yelling. Cog, Cog, Cog will aid. 41. Need, uh, yeah, 40, 43. Cog aids. Okay. Uh, given the, the weather, um, the slightly acidic snows, and the fact that we're in the middle of winter... This is very odd to be doing stonework during this time, but it appears that there is a small army of dwarves and priests, and a lot of them look like they are religious, um, are partaking in construction. Um, some of the priests aren't enjoying doing this work, while others seem to wholeheartedly have joined the song that is giving praise to Morden as the Lord of Craft. Uh, and you've got a choir of uh, dwarven singers inside the hall that are singing at the same time as the crafting is going on. Oh, they're singing the same song? Yep. That's some fucking harmonizing right there. <laughs> Indoor and outdoor. <laughs> the doors of the temple are open, uh, but you do see that there are guards to the temple itself. It, it feels like wrong time of the year to be to be doing stonework and, and upgrades to the temple. Um, you're seeing some priests not too happy about what's going on, and it looks like the entire clergy is involved in this endeavor. Okay. But, like, they've called in every priest is contributing at this point in time. Okay, so Bredos is going to cast a mythic heroism. <laughs> Okay. I am a hero of the god of the dwarves, just, just, and then go engage in diplomacy. Just for we laymen folk, what does mythic heroism do? Uh, plus four to hit damage, save skills. You know, just a good old, good old time. So greater you, heroism, but it, except it uh, lasts for ten minutes per level. Ah, that's all right, right. And then uh, on top of that, um, if you if I if I burn, I can actually also grant myself haste. During the, oh, that's pretty cool. During the spell, like yeah. a, a haste gets like auto cast once yeah. during the the use. That's Perfect. pretty cool too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you know, but uh, it's just uh, we're we are cheesing the diplomacy checks for this, and yep. hopefully, I don't need to go back to the evil man to 
<laughs> the implement I brought with me. All right, are you are you approaching the cathedral? Yep, I'm walking straight up to the guy who looks like he's in charge. All right, Security. so yeah, some of the priests. Uh, oh, it's Brenos. Brenos. A couple of the priests approach you, and and uh, as you're as you're approaching, but you could just brisk yeah, by them if you by. wanted to. I, you wave and walk up to the. Okay. Um, standing at the top of the stairs uh, with a couple of priests and, and he puts up his hand almost as a hail but a command to stop. Uh, it is under priest uh, Merrick Ironfell. You, I don't know, give me a knowledge local or knowledge religion, Brenos. Okay. Uh, one of these I know how to do. Um, uh, 14. Uh, okay. 24 plus 6 to identify his type. 24? <laughs> yep. Uh, give me a second. Technically, I think I could raging diplomats because I have the powers to do that, but it's like... <laughs> Very awkward. Love me! Love me! I could see it in like a speech. Yeah. Like a, yeah a very aggressive speech. A very fiery <laughs> speech, yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, there's this old book that gave the hierarchy and the and the titles for all of the hierarchy of all the gods. Give me a second, let me see if I can find it. Intermediate. Are you talking about like Greater, intermediate, and lesser. Church of Moradin uh, titles. Clergy. Oh, the titles within the church. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I've got no idea. I just need to know if this guy can identify a doppelganger too, because I, I can't. <laughs> it's I'm gonna call the wuss. <laughs> here's Mark's hot day. Not a fan of dwarves. All right, um, you you knew Murik, uh because he was a priest the last time you saw him, but right now he is wearing the uh, the robes of a craftsman of runes, hmm. which is two ranks below, like the ultimate high priest, like two ranks below Pope of Morden. <laughs> Uh, the Smith of Souls, there would be one for all of Elsirville. Okay. Okay. Uh, would he be the ranking guy here? Or would that yeah, be he'd, the... he'd be the ranking guy here. Right. Well. It's strange that he that he's braving the weather and just guarding the front of the church. You could hear the holy sound of, of uh, the songs of Morden and of Kraft. Brenos. Mm. Of the Morden Salmon. You are welcome here. Who are your friends? He says. He, he's. Give me a sense of motive. He's playing stupid. I understand. You're stupid. <laughs> Some kind of stupid. 50. 52. <laughs> he knows who Barnabas and Cog are, but he's asking to be polite. He's also yep. maybe playing stupid. 52. He's also. I don't know. Wants to see the freezing of the answer. He he's enjoying his little power trip. Well, my word, Cog, they have very fancy doormen here. <laughs> <laughs> These are members of the Steel Rose Expeditionary League. Uh, Barnabas, the geographer, Eamon Woe, his guard, and Cog. Um, also known as Matthias, a uh, an elf in shiny body. Are they here to convert? Nay. Then they can wait outside. Barnabas just kind of shrugs, like, is it okay with you if we wait outside? <laughs> Barnabas will shrug. They, they may hear the glory of the choir of Morden from the bottom of the steps. Yeah, or we could maybe hear it from the pub. Either way, <laughs> uh, he, he waves his hand like a 
Oh, Normally, yeah, this too. church is a little more inviting. They might close the doors for things that are like uh, internal church like rituals uh, and that sort of thing. But uh, for something as simple as this, um, it, uh, it is something new happening here.